Hey there, everybody. Shell Broadnecks here with another episode of Stager Talk. And I'm super stoked today because we have the fantastic Adrian Lord. How are you? And welcome. I'm great. How are you? Fantastic. So let's talk about um, leadership for a moment. You um, an awarded State President of the Year. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I will tell you when I saw you at Resacon, um, when the results came in and, and, you know, we have to order the awards and everything. So we know ahead of time who's right. won everything we have to. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, when I came up to you and I approached you afterwards, I'm like, I am so proud of you. This is <laughs> really, this is really well done, Adrian. I want everybody on notice now. I know I fangirled over you a bit at, at Resacon, <laughs> but I'm going to do it again now. So everybody's crystal clear. <laughs> Adrian, you really, you set the standards and your standards are not low. They're up here. Adrian, you've, you've traveled to different chapters. You make yourself available by phone. Um, you give back on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, truly every single day, you do something that you're giving back to the industry. What drives you to do that? Um, well, a, a couple of things. Uh, one is that I remember what it was like, and even though it was many moons ago, I remember not knowing what I didn't know and yeah. kind of going out there and, and really falling on my face and making a lot of mistakes and thinking, if I ever do make it, whatever that, whatever that means, is that I want to be able to ultimately, you know, save someone some time, some headaches, some money. Um, you know, how many stagers... Uh, and I know this, I don't want to be negative, Nancy, but but how many stagers are closing their doors? Not because they're not good stagers, it's because they didn't know what they didn't know. They made so many mistakes. Maybe they spent too much on inventory or they bought things they didn't need or whatever. And so I actually get a lot of joy from that, from doing that. Um, and, you know, I, I think, and I know it's corny and people get tired of saying that, is that these folks that are in your market or in your space are your colleagues. They can be your your best allies. They're not your your competitors. They are your competitors, but they can be your colleagues. And in most markets, there's enough business for everybody. Yeah. I'm in the Jacksonville market, and you know, there's twelve thousand twelve thousand agents and six thousand homes for sale. So I'm pretty sure I can't stage six thousand, <laughs> but I can support and really bring staging to the forefront so when an agent um 10 years ago really didn't know what staging was your average agent in jacksonville now we're out there in force uh we're teaching the classes we're having events that include agents um we, we're having a lot of more aha moments so all of that gives me real joy and uh there's a secret i'm also a realtor so uh you know i like both sides of the coin so i love what you said um you know, about, about giving back and not knowing what you don't know. And especially that we get it. Yes. That you people in the same market, you are competitors. A lot of you are competing for the same, uh, same, you know, customer base, right. mm -hmm. but man, I cannot agree with you more when you know who it is that you're working with in the area. All that does is elevate everybody. It doesn't have to be a, the knockdown drag out mm -hmm. cat fight type of, antagonistic relationships among right. people and i think for the most part people have these really healthy relationships with their colleagues yeah. in the industry every once in a while you know people bump some heads i think it's natural i think even in, in any industry people are going to have that but mm -hmm. for the most part i think you know when people have this positive uh vibe that you know rising tides raise all boats um it's a saying I've been saying for a very long time. I hijacked it from Karen Otto years ago. She has that spirit about her. She wants mm -hmm. everybody to succeed. I want everybody to succeed. Um, then there's definitely enough room for everybody. That's And this, this everybody is why Adrian Lord is an award-winning leader in our industry and award-winning. Oh, shucks. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's definitely it for sure. So what's going on in your state in Florida? Staging is concerned. What's your viewpoint and outlook? Well, so things were really, really, I've got two hats. I'm a real estate broker as well. So things were bonkers, um, which is a little counterintuitive if you think about, hey, we had a pandemic, so we got really busy, but it's certainly true. So 2020 and 21 were bonkers. And then in this last four months-ish, once interest rates went up, inventory went up, 
the, the sellers that had gotten a little comfortable and dare I say cocky, we don't need to stage. I can throw anything over the fence and it's going to sell. Well, guess what? We're now getting to more balanced market. And even as someone who owns real estate, um, it is not healthy to have it so lopsided where there are so many buyers competing for that listing that it artificially drives up property values. Uh, so I'm glad and I welcome it to be a more balanced market for, you know, selfish reasons too, is that now we're going to see those agents that really kind of in my, my market, I can say, and I can't speak for other markets, but in my market, we really saw a pause button on traditional staging we had because people were flocking to Florida for a variety of reasons. Um, during the pandemic, we had um, from kind of three areas, kind of a triangle. We had from the Northeast, so your New England, New York, that area, we had California and we had South Florida. So we had an influx and things were selling and things at all price points and all conditions were selling with multiple offers, you know, thousands over list. Now we've got a more balanced market and how your property looks is paramount. And so now we're getting these folks that we hadn't heard from for two years. Hey, how much is it to stage? Da, 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 da. So that's where our market is going that I, in my opinion right now. Um, so uh, more inventory for sure. Um, but the buying power of the consumer has been reduced because the interest rates are almost double from a year ago. Right. right. So that house that I could afford in 2021, maybe I can't afford it now, or I'm going to have to be willing to pay, you know, three, five hundred dollars more a month. Right. So it's a, it's a different complexion uh, of the market than we had um, a year ago. Yeah, absolutely. The good news with staging is that it's really it's really kind of a recession proof uh, career option, you know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it works in a hot market um, and it works in a slow market. So um, it's uh, I love what you say. What about a balanced market? Everybody keeps saying, oh, the market crashed in 2008. No, it corrected. Mm -hmm. It corrected. It's re in reality. And so all the the fears and everything, it's like it it ebbs and it flows and it's all going to come back. And the key thing for stagers is to be prepared all the time, um, you know, and to be able to pivot and to adjust what you're doing and in order to accommodate the changing markets. But it's a great opportunity right now for stagers. Yes, ab absolutely. Absolutely. Anything new on the horizon for you at Stage to Sell Jacksonville? Um, well, we, um, you know, just for the record, we never stop staging. Even when we knew we were going to be spending time and money and putting, putting, you know, inventory in a house and marketing the house and positioning and taking beautiful photos. Even when we kind of knew in the back of our head, this house is going to have eight, 10, 12 offers. We still did it. And not wood. We have had all of our properties also appraised during that that time period when things were kind of artificially inflated. So yeah. the perceived value of the consumer, the appraiser, et cetera. Um, but what's going on in our market, um, we're seeing a huge rise. Um, and I think that it's economically induced, pandemic induced variety of reasons, but we're seeing a huge rise in short-term rental. That's big in our market. So yeah, people are looking for those kinds of properties. Um, and of course, we're staging those kinds of properties as well. And we really picked that up during the pandemic when our traditional staging kind of waned, where, you know, that's something that is going to be an ongoing need. You're not competing with virtual staging when you're staging a house that needs to be rented for a vacation. So um, that's another, you know, secondary um, source of revenue that if stagers aren't considering doing, they should, in my opinion, if they have the inventory. Um, it's a great way in our business to um, retire some of our gently used but very functional furnishings where we can do it very economically for the for the customer for the person who's buying the property and it looks great um, so it's a it's a it's a side hustle and for some stagers it's actually becoming their primary um, business model you know so that we're seeing that really as a huge trend over the last two years Absolutely. Now you mentioned virtual staging. Have you, uh, have you, is any, is, is it taking a hit? Are you guys taking a hit with the virtual staging options in your area? Have you heard of any of that going on? Um, well, I, we do have some um, photographers or primarily the, the culprits, no, but primarily the, the folks that are doing the virtual staging because they can include it as an add-on. Um, so yeah, we are, we are still seeing that. Um, 
we are doing primarily, full disclosure, our own listings, but we do what we also call, it's our term, retail staging. It has nothing to do with retail establishments. But if uh, someone calls us from a competing brokerage, yes, we will stage um, their property. But um, yeah, virtual staging is still uh, a thing in our market. Um, but I have opinions about that. And, and the opinion I have is it's about um, with virtual staging, I think that people that do it understand shopping behavior, but not buying behavior. You hear me out here. Shopping is what I do on my phone and I'm on Amazon and I see all these shoes that I like. Okay. Buying behavior is an emotional response. So I'm looking on Zillow and I'm seeing pictures of things I like. Maybe the house is virtually staged. That's me selecting something from a big group and making it a smaller group. That's shopping behavior. Okay. Psychology. Buying behavior is an emotional response that happens when I'm in the property. I'm very few people right now, even in today's market, are like adding to cart and buying a house without seeing seeing it in person. Once I walk into the house, am I having that emotional response or am I having a letdown? You know, I don't have enough data to support that, but my hunch is that when I walk in and I see, wow, huh, I thought that couch was there. I'm now distracted by that and not seeing the overall big picture. So because they're so enamored with the technology, aren't we all? How'd that work? How do they do that? And I'm lost sight of why the heck am I here in the first place? You're talking about this technology, but you've missed that this room has crown molding and a water view. So um we won't ever subscribe to virtual staging. That's just against everything we're about. But yes, it still exists. Um, but that's one of the things I teach about in our CE class is you got to understand shopping behavior, which is the pretty, the shiny, I like it. You know, that guy on match.com that looks so great. Yeah. <laughs> Buying behavior is does my heart go pitter patter when I see that guy at the dinner table? Is he the same guy that I saw online or is it different? Do I feel a bait and switch? That's a really, really great way to explain it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have similar thoughts on it. And part of sometimes part of me says, you know what, there's there's probably a, a call for it at some point. There's mm -hmm. maybe a good fit somewhere. It's not definitely not for everybody, but it's an option um, mm -hmm. if you are extremely limited on your options. And here's the thing, too, is that in reality with stagers, if uh, budget is the driving force of the decision and they're going to go with a virtual option, they weren't your customer anyway. Right. If, you know, they weren't going to. So it's really not taking anything away from you. If, you know, they can only afford 350 bucks, 400 bucks for some virtual photos. That's yeah. not anything that you could have done, you know, in a vacant. So. Yeah. So fun fact, uh, had a property that was virtually staged. Um and sat on the market for 60 days. We came in and did our real staging, reshot the photos. The virtual staging that left in the property, this was a real story, um, was because they didn't include appliances. The flipper ran out of money, I'm sure that's what happened. So the appliances were virtually staged, which is fine. We just had a little disclaimer saying these are, you know, um, for illustration only, like, you know, they're not real. Um, multiple offers, first weekend. Price stayed the same. Real furniture, we kept some of the virtual staging that kind of, helped illustrate and paint a picture for somebody. Um, but you could tell it was the real deal. Um, so I think there's a place for it as a supplement, or maybe you've got a room that's multi-purpose. So I've done it where I'm staging it as an office, but the virtual stager will say, this also is near the, the primary bedroom. So maybe it could be a nursery. Maybe it could even be, we had one that we showed it as converted to a huge walk-in closet. Well, I couldn't have done that in, in staging. So I think right. it has a place to augment what I'm doing. But I think that particularly at luxury price points, um, I wouldn't put all my eggs in that basket. I like that idea, it, especially if you do have an unusual room that, yep. you know, I'm sure there's lots of times as a stager, you walk into a space and you're like, oh, I know what I want to do. With my this. head. <laughs> and you're like, oh, it might also look really good this way. And you may have two different ways to showcase a room. Yep. So you stage it the one way. And then you could also show it in another way yep. or like, you know, uh, if, if you aren't doing all of the bedrooms to be able to have those photos included yep. and to be able to show that um, in addition to, so that's mm -hmm. a good idea. Yep. That is a really good idea, especially again, when budget is a certain way with stagers, if, you know, they get a bid and it's a whole house staging and say that's out of my budget, what is your budget? Well, we can do that, maybe come down and offer the virtual for the, for the rooms that are, mm -hmm. you know, being edited out. It's a slippery slope because once you offer that, so I don't offer that up front because when I do and they explore it and they see that, you know, I just have to be cautious because then sure. we're going to grab it all. 
I offer it once I have that contract and it's signed as a, I'm augmenting what I'm doing. I can't, yeah. I can't stage this space, Mr. And Mrs. Customer, five different ways. I can stage it one way, but we can show, we can illustrate other things if you'd like that. Would you like that? Yeah. Yes, it costs X. Absolutely. I love it. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That's right. All right. Well, Adrian, it is always so nice to uh, sit and chat with you. So I really appreciate you taking the time and congratulations Absolutely. again um, on the award. Very Thank well you. earned. Well Thank deserved. You. Thank you. We'll see you uh, every time. Absolutely. For, for everybody else, until next time, thanks for joining me and happy staging. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.